Art Nouveau movement started around 1890 and lasted until around 1914 or the beginning of World War I. This movement spread throughout the world. It was extremely popular and influenced styles from art to architecture to advertising, entertainment, poster creations, and of course what we're here to talk about, jewelry. This style was to allow the world to put the Victorian era behind them and begin creating modern and unique art or new art, hence the name Art Nouveau. The Industrial Revolution also had a hand in helping the Art Nouveau movement as it was creating mass-produced, low-quality items, as well as creating a massive amount of pollution and taking over land and natural resources. The artisans of the day wanted to go back to high-quality, handmade items with the modern design. They drew inspiration from nature, mythology, and by creating a new sensual woman motif. Before this, women were portrayed solely as homemakers, wives, and mothers. Since they now were entering the workforce, voting, and allowed an education, men began to see them as a more sexualized creature and not just a modest housewife. It is important to mention that Art Nouveau was not an heir, but a style movement. It bridged the end of the Victorian period to the beginning of the Edwardian and ran concurrent with the arts and crafts movement and Belle Epoque era. So identifying Art Nouveau jewelry is done through learning the motifs and materials instead of looking at the clasps for the precise dates. Jewelry from this movement is hard to find because it was just a very brief period with very specific designs. Although there were many different interpretations, they all follow the same lines. Nature was the largest influence in the jewelry, even when it comes to the mythological pieces and the pieces that portray women, they still harken back to the same swaying, flowing, or willow-like designs that the branches in nature makes. There are many different motifs throughout the Art Nouveau movement, however most can be placed under four categories, animals and insects, nature, women, and mythological. These motifs are nothing new to the jewelry world, but during this time, art and design came together and they made something amazing. The animal and insect motifs are dominated by these main categories. They're used by themselves or combined with other motifs. Swans, dragonflies, and butterflies are the ones we see most often. Nature plays a special part in this movement. It is interwoven throughout all the motifs, however, it can also stand alone. Dominated by the vines swirling through flowers and designs, these pieces have no limits. From lily pads to abstract whiplashes, each piece creates a unique display of beauty. Women are becoming more independent and distancing themselves from the household. This works its way into the Art Nouveau motifs. The seductive silhouettes of women also help to shake off the prudish Victorian style. Their flowing hair, ethereal look, and head adornments make this motif easily identifiable. Mythological motifs are exciting, whimsical, and begin to reintroduce nudes into jewelry. This is where art and design combine to make the biggest impact. Women are combined with dragonflies, griffins, and butterflies to make a new mythical creature. Dragons become in vogue again, while water nymphs and mermaids take on a seductive look. The flow of the jewelry never dead ends, and the designs, while some are not modern, have the perfect blend of the past and modern styles. Unfortunately, I have very little Art Nouveau jewelry that is true Art Nouveau left in my collection. But here's an asymmetrical buckle that I have kept that um, combines a couple different motifs. It is a, just a silver plate buckle, so it's not a very expensive piece. But as you can see, the hair curls up and then flows all the way down to the center. And there's flowers woven into it. And it goes up with some vines. There's some berries right here at the top. And the other side also has the hair flowing as well. 
Here's another piece from my collection that's an actual Art Nouveau piece. It's a sweet pea flower with a bright enamel pastel on it. It's quite small, so it makes the enameling even more impressive. It has this little pearl, it's just perfectly round pearls put on there, and it's representing a dew drop. On the back, you can see it is gold, still matte finished on the back, and the catch is still a C catch. However, the hinge is actually a round hinge and is machine made. So, from the tube hinge on a almost all Victorian jewelry, now we see the round hinge that's been machined. And that's the reason we can't date by the hinges on Art Nouveau jewelry. And this has a continuous, like, design, and it flows. It's very uh, willow-like, and it's just a very small, very well-made piece. The materials and techniques used in the Art Nouveau period are very helpful in learning how to uh, date them and maybe see if it is an actual true Art Nouveau piece. Since I do not have many Art Nouveau pieces to show you personally, I'm going to be using some of the more famous artists throughout the Art Nouveau period and showing you some examples here to give you a better idea of the techniques and materials that were used. Snakes were a common theme throughout the Art Nouveau period. However, during the Victorian era, they were very popular as well. Here you can see examples side by side. You can see that the Victorian snake is jewel encrusted with a realistic look and the Art Nouveau snake has a flowing design with pastel enamels and only one diamond to adorn it. Art Nouveau jewelry focused on the quality and design instead of the stones. In the Victorian era, quantity and size played a major part of each piece and the jewelry was made to fit the stones. However, in Art Nouveau jewelry, stones were added to enhance the design. This jewelry used more semi-precious stones. Pearls was a favorite, and colored stones were also favored by designers. However, diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and high-end stones were also used. Here's a prime example of a Victorian piece that favors the stones instead of the design. Although the design is gorgeous, the stones are actually the centerpiece. The carved carnelian, pearls, and amethyst all create a stunning look. While in contrast, these Art Nouveau brooches design dominates the imagery, and the broke pearls and opal only help the design. Enameling was being extensively used during this movement, and there were several different techniques being used. Here are some examples of plique azure. Plique Azure uses translucent enamel and is filled in painstakingly by hand. This is like cloisonne, but the end result is unbacked, so it gives it a see-through, stained glass effect. René Lalique, Louis Comfort Tiffany, and Henry Vivier were all masters at this technique. But these are just three of my favorites, and by far not all of the masters at this technique. The next technique is an ancient one. Cloisonne has been used for hundreds of years. It consists of backed enamel with the designs being made with thin lines of metal. For jewelry in the Art Nouveau movement, this mostly consisted of yellow gold. Here you can see the little thin lines of gold embedded in the enamel. And here the lines are making up the feathers of the peacocks. The third technique is called guilloche. Guilloche is a finely engraved design 
that usually are mechanically made. This is then covered with a translucent enamel to bring out the design from the metal. The designs are quite uniform and look like something that you might have made on your spirograph when you were a kid. Even the world famous Fabergé used this technique on his 1898 Lily of the Valley Imperial Egg that was done in the Art Nouveau style and presented to the Romanovs. Jump leave is the last technique that ruled the movement. This does not mean there were not other techniques used in enameling, but these are the four that were predominantly used during this movement. Jump leave is done by the artist hollowing out or cutting out pieces of the metal and then applying the enamel directly onto the jewelry. Jump leave was the least used out of the four techniques, but it was combined beautifully with the other techniques such as pliqueur and cloisonne that you can see here. These techniques can be a little difficult to decipher at first, but once you learn the differences, study up a little, you'll be a pro in no time. The differences are pliqueur is translucent and has no backing. Cloisonne is made with tiny strips of metal and is backed. Gyoche is a metal turned engraving topped with a translucent enamel. And jump lees is cut out reservoirs where the enamel is poured directly into it. Sadly, most of us will never get anywhere close to owning a piece of this jewelry. It is very rare and the designer pieces fetch a king's ransom at auction. However, there are some extraordinary pieces that were made by companies us poor folks can still afford. Cremens is one of those. They made beautiful pieces, just like the sweet pea I showed a little earlier. I hope that you learned a little more about Art Nouveau jewelry and this video helped you. Let me know your thoughts, questions, or comments. Thank you so much for watching and please give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Bye!